no power to my garage. Garage is seven. That one, do it. I do it. Let me do it. Yeah, you got power again. Seventeen torch. Super amateur. Howdy! What else? Hi, hello. What's up, butt lickers? It's Wally! Back in the garage. My wife's helping me come up with the uh, the uh, intro sayings here, and that, that was her favorite so far. It made her giggle, so I think we're going to go with butt lickers today. What's up? We're going to talk about this little guy. Tonight, we're going to weld in the uniball cup on the beam bracket mount. I did this already. Um, I did not film it, but now I'm going to film it. I think I got a good idea of what it needs to do and how we're going to do it. So let's go. Got the uniball in place right here. And I've got the cup where it needs to go. I did a little uh, test run prior to installing this and welding this beast up. And uh, yeah, it needs to go right in the center. It looks straight, I don't need much adjustment, and that's where it's going to go. But the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take this uniball out of the cup, and uh, here's the special trick that I was talking about, uh, which is going to help you guys later in life. She go. Sneaky little guy, found it. Anyways, so got that out. Look at this, look at this little, look at this little guy. Goes right in and out, no big deal. Just in the uniball cup, well, kind of. It went right out, but here's the trick. This is what you guys need to do uh, prior, like a long time prior to reinstalling it later, so check this out. Yep, that's right, you're gonna put that guy in the freezer gonna help out just just enough it's not gonna it's gonna shrink it just like the teeniest like, little tiny bit of enough just where when that uniball cups all welded back up and hot and distorted just just enough that it's gonna go back in there without too much uh, too much of an effort uh, what you're gonna do now wherever I put that is you're going to replace this guy your slug, I purchased this from Cartec, a um, company called Next Gen Off-Road sells them, and you can also purchase them through, I don't know, I know it was Cartec, Next Gen, and Off-Road Warehouse, that was the other one. So you're going to take that guy that you purchased, and you're going to fit it right in your uniball cup. There we go. Nice and tidy in there. That's what we do. So the last time I did this, I put um, NICs on it, but it just kind of smoked a lot. I don't think that the brass needs NICs. Now, if you were just using a uniball cut or another, or like an old uniball to do this, I might suggest putting NICs in there, but since I, I'm using brass and I'm not going to, so. Um, the other thing is I'm not going to stick the, um, the snap ring in there because I don't want to uh, screw that thing up. So we're just going to use the uh, slug as it is and uh, yeah, start welding this bad dog up. Uh, with TIG welding, you, you always want to be as clean as possible. This has been sitting in the truck and I probably need, I'm going to go over it again with some sandpaper, some acetone and get her ready to go so
I've got the Uniball cup sprayed down with acetone. I hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and it's in position now. I've got the slug inside. It's time to start welding this beast up. Um, on my TIG welder, I'm gonna, I was, this was for the video. I'm gonna actually position this where it doesn't do that. Um, on my TIG welder, I'm welding it at, uh, I welded the last one at 150 amps. Um, I wasn't full pedal the whole time, just depending on how it was, but that's the setting I had for this Uniball cup, and it seemed to weld decent with my setting, so. Um, the Uniball cup's super thick. It's like, I don't know, quarter inch thick and uh the beam itself is like an eighth inch thick i mean there could be a completely different settings i don't know about i don't take well that much i'm just doing my best with what i got anyways let's get after it i got one of these uh fancy empiric cups i think so is what they call it it's a fupa it's a 12 on a 17 torch three thirty seconds 3.30 seconds uh, tungsten, 3.30 seconds rod, filler rod. I think, I think this is correct. If anyone knows better than I do, just fill it in here because I'm learning. Uh, also, on that note, my gas settings are at 20. They're at like, they're like 22 right now, but I think when I'm drawn, it's like... 1920 so this is much information as I can give so you guys can tell me how to weld better because I'm basically just a super amateur <laughs> should have cleaned out my workbench a little better. There. Yeah. Camera. So there you go. Camera. 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 Too much on one spot on one side. A piece of wood. There we go. So last night I finished up the uh, welding of this beam bracket right here, or uh, uniball cup. Came out pretty good in my opinion. This lens just isn't focusing. Either way, my welds came out, they're going to be good. Um, this is what I wanted to show you. You've got this uh, completely frozen uniball. Now we're going to take the slug out. Um, it's, it's in there tight, you know, like... Just for instance, I didn't really want to hit it with a hammer, but it's kind of working, so there you go. Got our fancy slug out. We want to flip the beam around. And the uniball should go in pretty easy. Look at that, I press it in by hand. Almost. Put the slug back on it. I mean, it was basically there. And that's it. So by freezing the uniball cup, or the uniball, it'll help it fit in the cup after you're welding it. Using the slug right here, that's gonna help tremendously overall. That's awesome. So these quick little tips should help you, a little frustration, 
uh, after you do it's gonna work anything helps so I hope this video helps somebody um, if you guys have any welding tips for me please let me know and on that note um, this little task is finished and I just want to let you guys know that I'm willing to learn from you guys if you guys have any tips or tricks that are better than what I'm doing please share. Um, I want to use this kind of channel as an open source for myself and whoever's watching um, for a growth of information, you know. Um, a lot of us are building Broncos for the first time. Yeah, I've done a lot of stuff on the Ford Ranger, but it's different with a Bronco. I've never built the beam stuff like this, so it, I'm just learning as I go. Um, luckily for me, I got a lot of friends in the uh, industry, I guess you'd say, that I can ask a lot of questions to, but like I said, if you got a trick at your house because you don't have all the fancy tools like I don't and you're using a lot of Harbor Freight stuff like presses and, you know, drills that light on fire basically when you're using them, uh, yeah, let me know the best tricks. I want to learn just like you want to learn because that's why you're watching this, I hope. Hopefully this is entertaining for you guys as well. I'm having fun with it. So, yeah, let's keep on building, guys.